Hey Restoration fans, welcome back to another episode. Today we're hanging out at Billy's Ranch and we're visiting the 91 Cummins that we talked about in our last video. This is video number two. Since then, we've been able to get new paint on this truck, new wheels, tires, and a lift kit. However, I'm gonna leave that for later. Today I'm gonna talk to you about the seats. As you can see, the interior behind me is all ripped out. We decided to get rid of that bench seat, which I mentioned in the video I was gonna reupholster. I moved on to putting in some 2007 Dodge seats. However, this truck, as you may know, was not set up for them. So we came up with a system that allows for those seats to be plug and play, and I wanna share that with you. So if you've been thinking of doing something like this to your old school Dodge, definitely stick around. You'll learn a thing or two about what you gotta to do to make sure you get those 2007 seats in and have a much more comfortable ride. So Jabin, tell us, when you're dealing with an old truck like this and the fact that the floorboards weren't made to accommodate 2007 seats. What do you have to do when you're planning for the fabrication of whatever's gonna go on the ground to adapt to these seats? Basically what I did to make the new seats fit was I took the, the uh, old brackets that were on the old bench. One went right here and one went on the other side. On this side here. And those are those triangular brackets, right? Yeah. They're attached to the bench seat? Yeah. Okay. And uh, it originally just bolted on with four bolts. One here, one here, one there, and one Three there. Three and four. And my design that I wanted to do was I wanted to make as the least amount of holes in, into, the, into the body as possible. So I decided I want to use the same holes and I'm going to use those brackets. So I put in the brackets, one here and one there, and then laid the seats out and then figured out how, uh, how much uh, room I had to work with. And I welded together a little frame and it welds onto the original brackets. So it just looks like we're building a new bench seat and the new seats are basically just going to sit on top of there and bolt onto that new frame. Okay, so in the event that, for example, if a seat gets torn for some reason and it has to go back to the upholstery shop, it doesn't come out as a bench. It comes out as individual pieces. Exactly. Okay, yeah. cool. The, the frame on the bottom is going to be like a bench frame, but each seat can be taken out individually as needed. Now, you mentioned not having to do um, any new holes. I, I do notice that there's two. I'm assuming that these are for the frame? Yeah. Um, the frame actually bolts on uh, on this back one, this front one and then runs across the other side. These holes right here, um, I made some little angled little brackets that were welded to the seats because the, the floor is all different levels here. So in the end, I had to make two extra holes because for me, it was the only way I could make those seats fit in this truck. Okay, now speaking of levels, uh, I don't know, I haven't seen new trucks, but I can only assume that the floor on those is a much higher level, right? So that these bench seats just sit on top of essentially what we're trying to do with the frame? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, um, the, on the new trucks, uh, under the seats is much higher. It comes up a lot more. And most of the seats, they bolt in from the front with little arms that come down and it's usually bolted here, bolted there. And then somewhere in the back, they figure out another way. It's either straight down or on the sides. Right. So with the new frame that I made for this one for those seats, it's a combination of the old style and the new style because I did make them where they do bolt in in the front onto the frame. So you can actually remove the seat. Gotcha. Well, let's put the frame in there so the viewers can see what that's all about. Okay. And then maybe put the, the passenger seat in along with the the console if we can or at the very least that other seat so that they can get a good idea of how this frame works and how the seats are going to mount onto that frame okay so i'm noticing that you've got let's point this out real quick the the triangles that you were talking about are these here these are part of the original bench seat so as you guys can see javen repurposed these and so now they're sitting on this frame that he made so it's got the original bolts original position of where those bolts go so there's no making new holes and or you know trying to figure out where they sit so essentially this thing is supposed to just fit right in voila there you go i like so right here um the the new seat 
the rail is going to sit right here along this edge and it's going to bolt in with one bolt here two right here and then one is going to come in right here from the front it's going to go in like this yeah i see that it goes through here yeah okay so that's just another method of securing the seat all right let's try a seat and put it now in. i also see uh, real quick you notch this out i can only assume that that has to do because of the motors and the way that this seat does because uh, ladies and gentlemen, the, the driver's seat is power and the passenger seat is not. So is that why there's that cut out here? That is correct. There is um, actually three motors underneath the driver's side seat and they're all in different different areas. And the, the, to get it at the lowest as possible, I had no choice but to notch the, uh, uh, notch the tubing. So when the seat slides forward and back, the motor will pass right through that little notch and it won't touch anything. Right through here. Yeah, right through there. Looks good. All right, let's do the passenger side. And right down here on the bottom is where I welded in that other little bracket. Okay, and so, so that one there. Into it. Yeah, that's okay. where that other hole is going to go, right here. And then one bolt goes through the front right here. One will go right back over here. So he's bolting onto this frame here, this part of the frame, which is this, the rear hole. And now it's on the two front ones, right? Yep. Real quick, um, give us the dimension of the, of the tubing. What are the specs on the on the tubing that you used? Uh, this tubing was the thickest one that I could find. Uh, it's a 11 gauge steel, and it is a square tubing, and it is a one. I believe this was a one and a quarter. One and a quarter. Yeah, one and a quarter. Uh, 11 gauge. 11 I, I, gauge. They make thinner ones, but I wanted something a little bit, a little bit beefier, something that I could put a, a better weld. To. Especially because of this cutout, you yes. want to make sure it's super sturdy. So that's in the most forward position, which that seat will never be in. However, it does give you an idea of how you can access the, the bin that's back here that's original with these trucks. You know, you can put your tools back here, whatever you need to. So that's pretty neat. Um, so it does have that travel, which is good. Now we push it all the way back. There it is. The, the, the seat that these trucks were in before, they had these big brackets on there. One of them was riveted back here. And if you look in there, you'll see some uh, some little holes right there where they were riveted in. I had to remove those. And then there was another one that was in this, in this rail, but it's up inside here, you can't see it, but it looked just like the back one. Had to cut those off as well, because those actually, they came down about right there and they were had some weird shapes to them. So those are gone. And also what I'm gonna say is since I reused these little angled brackets from the original bench seat, we now have, we still have the floor clearance here like the original. If I didn't use this one, I would have had to have anchored this probably straight down right here. And I would have had to make new holes here and probably new holes back over here. So I think it worked out real well using the uh, the original piece from the original seat. Yeah, I think that's great. I can tell you that I've searched forums left and right, and I, I haven't seen anybody reuse that or repurpose that particular piece. So I think that was a good call. Now guys, this gives you a good view of how that original seat should turn out so that it can go forward and back and be free of any obstacles that come from the factory. And, and I'm also gonna say, you the seat is still at the same height as the original and you do have room for an amplifier or something right here if you are planning on putting in a sound system you have plenty of room so next we're going to put in the driver's seat so we can get an idea of how that goes in which is pretty much the same thing the only thing that changes here is we have power so we have a temporary source of power you want to show us that cable that oh, 80 yeah. foot cable that you have <laughs> Here we go. It's just a uh, two wires that I hooked up to a battery right now just so we can uh, uh, actuate the motor, make it move forward and back. But 
we'll rig it up real nice when it's actually time to put them in permanently. Okay, here is the driver's seat. You may not be able to see from here, but it's got all the motors and all the components and all the stuff that, that makes this uh, a power seat. All right. And this one's a lot heavier than the passenger side. And everyone, Jabe is making it look easy because he's put these seats in like 85 times now, <laughs> in and out. So he knows exactly how they're supposed to go in without damaging the steering wheel and making a mess of all the interior components. There. Nice, there it is, power. Okay, and then one bolt right here is gonna go in into the front. I don't know if they can see that. Just regular uh, 3 8 bolts. Well, these are grade eight. A little bit stronger than the grade five. That's one. Right here's another one that's gonna go right there. There it is, goes all the way to the front. Dude, I had an aunt that would drive with her seat just like that. <laughs> all the wow. way to the front. Super annoying. But it's good to know she can drive this truck if she wants. Now the power source, will that give us up and down too or just front and back? Oh, it'll do up and down, okay. front and back. And you can make the front come up and down and the back will come up and down. But I think it's down all the way right now. Let's find out. There we go. Nice. We got some rear action there. And then we got some front action. Now real quick for all you first geners, you know that back here there's that plastic piece, that molded piece which is not here right now, but as, as he's moving that seat back and forward, it, it actually kind of compresses in that back area. So if you have that piece there, you're gonna wanna be careful because you will crack it. So you've got that limit that you're gonna work against. However, in this case, we don't have it, so we're just moving it freely. I will put it back once the truck is done and be more careful with it, but it's fair to say that once the seat's in place and I'm the only one driving it, it's really not gonna move all that much. Now, anything you want to point out, Javen, for us that you're there that that varies from uh, passenger to driver's side? Uh, passenger to driver's side. Because um, it seemed to me like it's pretty much it's the, you know, the, the symmetrical way, in a sense. Yeah, the, the way uh, when I put these in the seats, I measured them out and they are the equal distance okay. between the seat and the door panel. Uh, since these are from a newer vehicle, of course, these seats are a little bit a little bit wider. They do take up a little bit more space. So these seats actually are closer to the doors than the originals would have been. Makes sense. Now the other determining factor is the fact that we're putting in the console, which if you didn't have it, you can bring them as close as you want. Uh, yeah, that is true. Right, so you, you have to work with that measurement in mind. So we have to base it from there, therefore it, it does come out more on the sides. Uh, we'll figure it out guys, once we put the actual um, door moldings back, how it how good it closes and i think next what we should do is bring in this console just set it there so they get the full picture of how this looks it bolts in with uh, a couple of bolts here on the bottom here's one down here yeah there's one two three four five six yeah there's six right there yeah and it just it just sets in place it sets in place so there it is fully assembled looks great now you can fit a third person. So it becomes a full bench. Excellent. Anything else you want to point out? Um, I am going to point out that once this is a, a seat from a different vehicle and it seems a bit taller than here than it does on that side, that's because there is something wrong with the cushion. Yeah, that one is, uh, for some reason, it's just beat to you know what and it this one is sits a lot lower but yeah as he's mentioning it's got like a a balloon to it for some reason i don't know what it's stuffed with however the guy who's going to reupholster he's going to take care of it and they need to look the same and possibly as low as possible right well cool man ladies and gentlemen there you have it 
If you've been thinking of putting newer seats in your older truck, this is an approach that you can consider. Next, I'm going to take these seats to the upholstery shop to give them that new crisp look that they deserve. Also, look out for the video that I'm going to do with this buzz mat. It's a sound deadening material. I'm going to place it on the ground here on the floor because as you know, it's bare metal and it's very noisy. So I want to reduce the noise that comes from the ground into the cab. With that said, keep an eye out. I think you'll enjoy it. Guys, I appreciate you taking the time. If you got use out of today's video, do me a favor and hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, consider doing so. I've got videos coming up with this first gen along with my old Mustangs. As always, I appreciate you watching and have a great one.